schedule a free design consultation, and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. Good evening. We begin in Lac La Biche tonight, where two men have been charged with attempted murder after a man was shot over the weekend. Our CMP responded to the incident west of Lac La Biche, where the altercation between the three males had, had previously taken place, leaving one man wounded after shots were fired. The suspects, 24-year-old William Conrad Ingram and 20-year-old Markian Kunetstov, are facing various charges. The victim was taken to an Edmonton hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The victim and suspects were known to each other, and RCMP say the public are not at risk. Battleford RCMP say alcohol was a factor in a weekend crash that saw one being taken to hospital just before midnight Saturday. They responded to a single vehicle rollover in the town of Battleford on 35th Street West and 3rd Avenue. The victim, the vehicle rather, was upside down on a front lawn and police say another vehicle had been damaged. Two men were in the vehicle when it crashed. One was trapped inside and had to be removed by rescue crews. He was taken to the hospital then. RCMP arrested the second man but have yet to lay charges. Distracting driving was a major cause of collisions, taking only a moment to make a fatal mistake. This month, Lloyd Minster RCMP will be focused on enforcing these distractions behind the wheel. Distracted driving is exactly that. Just anything that distracts the driver from focusing on the road. Anything from putting on makeup, texting and turning the dial on your radio to Holding your turned off cell phone while driving is considered a distraction. Inspector Suki Manage with the Lloyd Minster RCMP says the increasing problem is a sign of the times with more cell phones, GPS systems and social media notifications distracting people 24 seven. Receive more impaired driving offense uh, related calls, but they always always almost tend to be distracted driving. It's a new trend. It's, it's, it's almost as dangerous or some would argue more dangerous than, than impaired driving. Man says while you won't always get a ticket for activities like eating and drinking, it depends on the extent they're distracting the driver. However, he says the best way to prevent a collision is to not put yourself in that situation. Give yourself some time. When you're, when you're rushed to go somewhere, you tend to do multitask because you're late for some appointment or you have to be to pick up your kids or whatever the reason may be. If you spend an extra 10 minutes to get to where you need to get, I think that takes away your um, need to do other things while you're driving. The fine for distracted driving is $172 and for more extreme cases, $402 and six demerits. Whenever a major crime happens in a city, local police make it a goal to inform the public so that citizens know what's happening in their very own neighborhoods. But sometimes it is impossible to give out all the facts. In today's edition of our RCMP Monthly, we sat down with Lloyd Minster and RCMP Inspector Suki Manj as he explains when police can release information and when they cannot. Yeah, we're governed by a lot of different rules, uh, Privacy Act, uh, and just officer safety issues. There's reasons why we can't say what exactly what's happening. Um, if there's an ongoing investigation, you don't want to give away uh, the information that you might know so that the, the people that have committed the crime know what you know. So uh, there's all sorts of reasons why we don't. It's not a matter of not being open and, and um, transparent with the public. It's, it's naturally we, we can't tell everything just to keep the flow of our investigation going. All right. and, and so when can we talk about uh, cases? Uh, most of the time, uh, if, if it doesn't involve a specific indiv individual, we can give details on those types of things. If it's a police um, member involved related of offense that's happening or incident that's happened, uh, again, our hands are, are more tied in the sense that there's another governing body that has jurisdiction over that in uh, Alberta, Sears, um, Acer. They'll, they'll come in and they'll take over the investigation and, and it's up to them to release the information at that point. But if there's public safety uh, at, at risk, uh, everything trumps. So we, we will disclose what's going on, how, how it's affecting the public. So the public can be reassured that they'll never be put in jeopardy without knowing about something. And let's talk a little bit about the Crime Stoppers program that we've recently just started rerunning again. Now it might be a bit too early to see how effective it is in this city, but how effective have similar programs been like this in other communities? Well, Crime Stoppers is almost built into a lot of the uh, uh, investigative, investigative avenues that we take. So 
Uh, it's always an option that we try to do. Uh, in my past, uh, as a plain clothes commander in, in major crime investigations, we've used it to profile some really um, uh, high-risk incidents, and, and it's paid dividends. We've uh, uh, people are feel more free to to tell us what they know when when there's some anonymity behind it. Right? So. Um, it's a very successful program throughout, throughout North America, throughout the world actually.